Whew. Tell you, the old diesel engine was pretty slow firing up today. <laughs> right on three hours sleep. A um, little bit of a delay at the border, a little delay getting into the airport. I did that video for you guys. I didn't get home till 3.35 in the morning. I was up at, uh, well, my alarm went off at 6.55. I had to ring the bell for a minute. So I had to collect myself. I had a shave, shower, and a shave. I got to the burn. Man, the track was good. It, it was odd, though. I will talk about that in a minute. Uh, the track was good. I watched uh, Eyes of Ten. Uh, Blue by Udeo, who they had the hobbles off of. A little bit of a shock, but she looked good. Blue by Udeo and uh, Unbeatable Kemp, those so are getting closer now. We're, uh, I'm, even, even as we talk, I, I'm <laughs> doing other things in my head. I'm trying to... Um, figure out when are the horses going to Ohio, who's going to Ohio. Uh, we're trying to line up help for Ohio right now as we start to send some of these horses over. Um, you know, I was all set to turn out Locatelli last week. Then he draws into the class he was supposed to be in, so that's a good spot for him. If he did go out and win, theoretically, I guess White Tiger and him could flip-flop. But Tiger's going to get chewed up in that open field also. So, um... How many starts does he have left in him? He's been going forever, it seems like. Um, so just all this stuff going on in my head, which is tired to begin with, so it's all moving slower. Get to the barn, the horses, the three-year-olds trained great. I saw them go. I was very happy with them. Then we went with all our horses. We had some scratches. I didn't write down the scratches. Uh, Fashion Presidente was sick. Uh, Swinging Senorita was sick. Uh, Rito Legacy a little sick, minor temperature, but uh, had some mucus, so we didn't go with her. And there was one other horse, too. Anyway, everybody else went. Uh, pretty good day of training. Now, the track was a little bare and a little firm, and um, some of the horses weren't as good on the bare track. They're used to going on the ice and the snow, right? Uh, a little bit icier, snowier, harder conditions. So today, with it actually being stone dust, with it actually being a track, some of them didn't look as good as I as I thought they might. I got there, I saw the track, I'm like, wow, the horses are going to be awesome today. It's going to be a chore to keep them, you know, slower than 2.30 the way they've been training. A couple of them did be 2.30, but for the most part, I guess that was the other thing going on today was that most of the horses were training a little faster um, before Sleepy James gets back. So, <laughs> um, we were going around between... Uh, 232 and 238 with most everybody. There was a couple of slits, sets slid actually under that 230 mark to 229. Um, but good sets all around today. Some of the horses I've been waiting to jump up uh, did. Now, Crantini, he did make another break today. But he, hold on. He trained awesome on Wednesday. I went with a no break. Today, he was switching gears, getting into a top gear. He looked a little pinchy right front to me. And there was a little blood that foot. Now, he made a break on James two weeks ago and hit that quarter and when he did he's got a little slice there and that slice is opened up almost like a quarter crack so I'd ask the young lady that was here today filling in Donnie get hurt the other day so uh, Rachel thankfully filled in one of our clients filled in for us for Donnie today took care of Crantini I said would you mind uh, cleaning that foot up putting some animal intex on it uh, excuse me uh, for being tired uh, the animal intex is um uh, helps draw, dry that, that wound up and help draw it. Uh, there's some medication and I, I can't think of off the top of my head what it is, but uh, pretty standard stuff. Uh, cut on the foot, uh, put a little bluing on it, wait about a half an hour, or you can skip the bluing, go right to uh, uh, Animal in Texas, like a gauze, a thicker gauze pad that you just wet with hot water, or DMSO or both, and uh, put it on the foot. We just opted for hot water today. So, Crantini, um, otherwise, I think after the mile, when I got him really rocking, um, he was really good. See, you had to be careful, too. I don't want to be too hard on this horse. One, he's a he's a ginger, right? Sorry, redheads. Um, he's a chestnut. So, um, historically, I, I don't want to get down this, this, this line. Uh, where I'm going, so I'm down this rabbit hole, so I'm gonna just back my way out. He's a uh, he's a nice colt. He's a little heavy, also a big bone colt, um, and I don't want to be stuck in a hole of, of trying to push and push and push and push. Lo and behold, though, now he's on a right line. He's sore, 
as I said, uh, I'm giving him a wide, wide berth. I really like this horse. Always Charming was making a noise today. He was really hot on Mariel. Um, I immediately said to the caretaker after I said, I want to crit Davis on that horse from now on. Snake cord, and he can jog in an open bridle, and I'll go with him next week. That's what we'll do there. Beautiful gait. The horse is doing his work right. He just got doubled up a couple of times, and when get their thrown in like that, they can uh, flip their palate or they can make a little noise and he made a little noise which usually means that a little swelling is in the throat not a big deal it's very common uh, but you need to treat it treat it right away Rosita's dream I believe is good today I didn't get a, a rundown from Danny on him uh, I had made made a break with Crantini and I think Rosita's dream was good but uh, he's been good you know oh my god I can't figure out why I'm tired um <laughs> Carter Michael Dio, I told you guys, frankly, he was no good on Wednesday, but it was awesome today, bounced right back. Good horses do, right? Good horses always bounce back, and Carter Michael Dio was great today. Cutie Cumber, Amy said, was, I forget exactly what she said. She was pretty excited. She loves Cutie Cumber. Who doesn't? Um, and Cutie Cumber was very good today, and I saw that she was good, and I said, how was she? And she said, blank. I can't believe what I can't remember what she said. Um... Anyway, she was very enamored with the way she went. Cutie Cumber was great. Nothing but a dreamer was good, and Hasty Bid was also. It's James's horse. Jimmy went with him. He was good also. And the second set, we had a couple of Pacers scratched in here also. Oh, Rito Legacy was scratched. The other horse was. Chocolate for lunch was good. Jimmy said running in on the right line pretty good. Ah, that's to be expected. She's got those offset knees, and by the way, her brother running pretty good his whole life. He wore a roller burr when he a dull roller burr, but a roller burr at least until he went up to Harry's Barn in the summer. Um, you know, just a I guess a late bloomer is the way to put it. This Phillies I don't want to make comparisons, especially it's kinda you know you're name dropping, right? No free lunch went in what fifty three and a piece, twenty six and a piece in the end of it last night. And this is his sister and is there comparisons or similarities? Yeah, but I mean it's February. Silly to make comparisons just yet. Uh, but chocolate for lunch was good. Real fear is getting better. Johnny said, steers like a dump truck. We always joke about that. It was one of my sayings he used to say all the time. Just wanders in on the turns, out the straights. I think he's just finding himself, right? And, and, and Amy had said, well, he was so good at Christmas. Yeah, he's a medium. He was a medium build horse. That splint wasn't bothering him yet. He hadn't popped that curb yet. We addressed both, fixed both. And during that time frame, he gets sick and then ended up putting some weight on. So we're just getting him back in shape. I'm happy with Rio Fear. Johnny said he was good, just a little, a little, uh, just kind of wandering. So I'm not concerned with Rio Fear at all. I love this horse, and I think he'll come along in perfect time. Now, a horse I'd never gone with in quite a while was more than you know. This is the brother to Miss Mildred, uh, a filly that broke her hearts uh, last year for... for a different reason than, than it might sound like this filly get injured in her first qualifier man she had such she had such a bright future and then um, James went with her and she was just coming a big last quarter he dove her down to the inside and she severed her tendon in the race so very sad day for us but this is her brother uh, by Heston Blue Chip who wore our filly in Australia is a Heston Blue Chip right girl from Oz she's a very nice filly we haven't had a ton of luck with the Hestons here minor amounts, but not, I wouldn't say horrible luck, but not a ton of luck with the Heston Blue Chips. They're just not fitting in. They didn't fit in in New York. I don't I don't know if they're going to fit in in Pennsylvania. We'll see. But this is a Pennsylvania bred Heston Blue Chip. And man, uh, he's got a big engine in him too. A lot like his sister. She was a little hot, a little wiry. This guy's a little more methodical and um, he's well put together. I like this Colt a lot. First time I went with him. Him and uh, Victor Cruz were, I don't even Victor Cruz written down here. Idiot. Victor, Victor Cruz was flying on the end of it. Everybody can't wait to tell me how good Victor Cruz is. You're going to have a lot of fun with him. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. You know, we bought Victor Cruz to have fun with, and everybody says he is doing his work perfectly. Uh, him and I were right together, and we were smoking on the end of it. More than you know, Victor Cruz right together. Captain in the air was good also, and Old Check was good. Uh, a lot of horses were okay today. Two horses that stood out in that particular set for sure, more than you know, in Victor Cruz. Any standouts in the first one, Captain Mike Dio and Cutie Cumber were both standouts in the first one also. Third set went out. This is the fourth person that told me Whispering Song can absolutely fly, and that she is a very nice filly that somehow continues to fly under the radar. Um, Jimmy 
went with Whispering Sante and said she was awesome. He said, man, this is a really, really nice filly. No, thank you. Merchant Man was good. Mario Wilton, Merchant Man, said he was great. Marshall Zukov continues to be good. Horn Player made a break today. Dominic got doubled up in behind me. And he said, you know, I just wanted to go easy with her. I said, um, uh, we're not her mummy, right? We're here to train. We're here to train the horse to beat other horses. So if she's going to get doubled up and wants to get at it, maybe you're better off to let her get at it a little bit today and teach her incrementally next week um, and the weeks in, in, in the future. Knowing that she can get doubled up on a helmet, fine, we can work on that. I never had a problem with her. Because here, here's the thing. The way we train horses is not necessarily the same a lot of people do. It's the way that I was taught, right? The way that it was drilled into me. When we're training horses, you guys will notice, we're on top of each other. We are nose to helmet. And I do not like when people gap off two, three lengths. And I think Dominic, he knows I want them on top of one another, but still is worried that the horse will climb over top of the guy in front, especially if I'm the guy in front, right? Climb over top of the guy in front or interfere or hit the jog cart. You saw James um, twice now. He, he ran over a jog cart and once he fell down. So uh, it doesn't happen very often. It's not really as easy to do as you think it would be. Um, but I think Dominic was just playing it safe. I'm pretty sure I was the guy in front of him. And he just rolled up on top, grabbed her quick, and she kind of fought it and, and uh, made a break. So what you need to do in those situations is let them roll up on top of the guy in front. That might sound stupid, but they need to learn to be in a in tight quarters sometimes too, especially if I'm going to drive them. So, a uh, horn player made a break, but she was trotting great and looks great. Lady All-Star made a break, but broke her head check today. Now, this is important. I want you all to pay attention. I can't think of that many horses that have learned as much as Lady All-Star, and I didn't think she would. I just thought she would continue to be a stubborn filly, and we would have to work around it, right, as she got to the races. That's not the case. She's learning more and more and more, and she's looking to learn more. And you may say to yourself, you know, Anthony, well, how can you possibly know that? just the way her demeanor is on the track. The places you put her in where she hasn't been very often, in a hole, right? Climbing up on top of someone, she learns. She'll come up and she'll, you, you can see her kind of slow down, switch gears and, and roll up on top. That's a hard thing to teach a horse, especially a really hard thing to teach a young trotter. But I was very, I've been very impressed and I continue to be very impressed with Lady Elster's growth and mental maturity. Very fast Philly. She's picking it up now, which is impressive in its own right. Tailgate Buzz was actually, I think, a winner in the set. Uh, Merchant Man or Tailgate Buzz, they were both there together. They were layovers in that set, or, or standards in that set today. Brace for Landing made a break in the last turn. Now, Amy said, I interfered with her when I made a break. That is false. Uh, if she was to put an objection in against me, she would lose the objection. But I will give her the benefit of the doubt because I love her and she's my wife. And I don't want her angry at me. So uh, apparently I interfered with Brace for Landing today and he made a break. <laughs> uh, next at Sir Strong, we took the toe eights. No, that's a lie. Sir Strong lost a toe eight. And rather than rummage through the barn for another one or look for a new set, I just took the other one off. And Mario said, eh, he just wasn't trotting that good. But he's kind of an acquired taste right now, the way he's trotting. I was really impressed with him. But I had the hobbles on tighter, and I scored him down. I had him ready to go. Mario kept him quiet and let him jog along nice and easy out there. And I think it was the opposite of what he needed. And the toe weights may have been the contributing factor also. But either way, he made a break today. I'll rectify that on Wednesday. Anchors Up is getting better. He was a winner, I believe. Um, I was going to beat him a smoking hot Irish girl, but we put a head pull on her for the first time. And I told everybody after the pacing set, Brody and I really sprinted away from everybody. I said, hey, horses first over are on the front end, third quarter, back them up. Because if you're sitting seventh and we come 35 seconds, you're going to finish seventh. So let's give everybody a chance to get into it and get their horses into it. And that's what we were doing for the rest of the days. What we should have done for the rest of the for the rest of the month and the rest of the month and summer or spring. But um, I just want to give everybody a chance to, to, to get their horses moving and up into it. Because, you know, you get lulled into it. You sit sixth and you think to yourself, well, I'll just move them over and that horse will pace or trot hard. But if the other ones are going up wide open, it's very hard to make up ground, right? All things being equal. So uh, Anchors Up was very good on the front. I rolled up alongside him with Smoking Hot Irish Girl. I think she got a little angry in the last turn that I hadn't cut her loose yet. And with that head pull for the first time, as soon as she touched it, yeah. For those of you that have trained horses, you know what I'm talking about, young horses. First time that, or sometimes when they rub up against a head pull, they'll 
their first instinct is to fight it and lay right into it. She did that when I checked her. She made a break. It just, she just needs to grow up, that's all. Uh, but, man, she can fly. If I had to come wide open, I'd dust them easy. Um, Anchors Up was very good, though, and getting better by the day. Mo Power Baby, I kind of lost track of her in the crowd. Johnny said, when you made the break with Smoking Hot Irish Girl, I wheeled that around you. He said, Danny and I were together going under the wire, but three steps after the wire, I was gone. And by the time we got to the turn, I had everybody by five lengths. Mo Power Baby, I'm happy Johnny gets along with her. I don't got to go with her now. And she was very, very good today. Uh, leaps and Bounds. When I, when I made that break, I think she ran behind me also, um, and landing strip also. So I, I, I was a bit of a menace today, I interfered. I'll, I'll take the eye for that one. I'll, I'll, inter, I'll say I interfered with leaps and bounds. They had to check their horse as soon as they did, they made a break. Leaps and bounds and landing strip, but both said, Dominic said leaps and bounds was very good, and Jimmy went landing strip and said, until I had to check when he made a break, the horse was awesome. So happy there. Uh, next set, sipping on my shine. He was acting up today, but I worked him real hard on Wednesday. Maybe he's just having a little pouty week, feeling sorry for himself because he got worked hard. Uh, but he was decent today. Um, he had made a break and threw himself. I had a, head, a line pull on him. He threw himself and it come undone. And he was actually fine after it came undone. He went a mile and actually 28 behind everybody else. Uh, finished up fourth or fifth, but look good. Silent Assassin was flying down the lane. Very, very happy with the way this filly turning into an extremely versatile and what looks to be an extremely useful horse for the summer in New York. She does everything right. She can move like a cat. And with the hobbles on, she's virtually flawless. So very, very happy with what I've seen from her. Landing pad has been strong. Johnny said a little hot, but has been very, very strong. Uh, Spitfire Overseas was the winner in there. Una Madonna never got out yet. Uh, why didn't he get out? I was beside him was sipping on my shine. Um, she was climbing over everybody and then when got room late was flying. Spitfire Overseas and her looked great. My 1% Mario did the right thing. Just run him up the inside the whole way. He is looking very good. We're going to have a lot of fun with my 1% this summer. That entire set was very good. Especially once I got sipping on my shine back into it. A lot of talent this colt, but these what the hells, they are stubborn. Whoa! You gotta pour the work to them, and if you happen to make a, miss a couple of work days, man, they really, uh, their default is definitely stubborn, but fast, durable, tough horses, but they are stubborn. Uh, next set was what you might call the open. We had a couple of uh, very strong sets, but Enzo Guello was good again. Uh, somebody made a break. Full Heart was acting like a bit of a cow today. I think she's in heat. She was horsing a little bit, so we'll put her on Regimate. She was trotting good. You just see Johnny rolled up alongside me and said she actually tried to kick me in the training mile. I said, not the set, not the first time she's done that either. Uh, but today she was a little cranky. Sister Solange was good. Columbus, Dominic said, I know what you mean about the what the hills after we were pulling up. He said, man, he gets running in. He said, will he wear a head pull? I said, he will, but he just gets in. I should have went with him. I just couldn't today. Uh, he was great on Wednesday, so I'll leave it at that. Um, Enzo was fantastic again. And GJ's ATM, this horse looks... Uh, competitive with anybody from any of our jurisdictions. So look out in look out Illinois. We got a real real nice trotting colt in GJ's ATM so far. I'll tell you, we'll talk about another colt. Rosita Stream was good today, and he's been good. But the other colt was actually good today also. So we'll keep going here. Uh, Tactical Mounds was good again today. Very very happy with her. Uh, Cunning Connie, I believe she won the set. Cunning Connie looked fantastic. And the Tom horse, uh, Magical Tom, looked very good. Jimmy said after, he goes, really angry, stubborn bugger. I said, well, he's trying to teach him stuff on the inside. is tough. He'll learn. I said, but once you get him in, he goes, man, he can fly. Really nice horse, but he can be a stubborn bugger too. Uh, I think he just wanted to get out of his work today. Jimmy did the right thing, keeping him keeping him bottled up. Hill Street Blues was much better, but I did lose him in the last turn. I see a mark on his knee. Um, I think we're making positive gains on the shoeing. I think we're doing we're going in the right direction, so we'll keep moving forward in that regard. I'm going to take the toe weights, bell boots off him. He's going to end up being shot almost exactly like, and and the equipment wise exactly like. Oh my gosh, and oh my gosh has been tremendous since we changed all him around. He different horse. I told you guys, you guys would be very happy, very happily surprised when you see oh my gosh next week. Uh, and speaking of, oh my gosh, he was in the next set. He was very, very good today. Now, he did slip and make a break coming out of the last turn, but it was literally the rail path was all dirt, 
and the rest did a little snow on it. So there was quite a transition there for some horses. I can assure you that's all it was with him. Uh, just looked awesome today. Five fish species was good. Uh, okay, I gotta tell the truth. She made a little break, but Johnny figured uh, with her being shot, he said, I, I don't know what it was. He said, she's just on the left line a little bit. We're gonna look at I don't think there's any issues. Wednesday, he put a beating on me, but she was due to be shod. So you have to ask yourself, maybe she's one of those horses that like to go with a little longer toe. I think that's it, because uh, I know that um, uh, I know that our blacksmith Preston had said that uh, quite a lot of toe was taken off of five fish species. So that statement itself pretty telling. Um, High Enterprise was awesome. A Amy kept her going. Was locked in with her. She was very good. Cash deals hobbles made a uh, broke. Not my hobbles. They wouldn't do that. Uh, these were um, belly band hobbles. I hate them anyway. I hope they broke in right in half. Um, so cash deals, I just saw him pull her up and go back to the barn. So it seemed to be trotting good otherwise. Austral Hanover was okay. Burnt in his hobbles pretty good. He's okay, right? He's got some work to do. There's, a, there's probably four or five horses here that really got to start putting it together at some point. And Austral, he's okay. You know, the breeding's there. He just needs to do more. I'm sure he will. Um, he was okay today. Lost Spirit was just a, a cakewalk. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. He's turned into a really nice horse. Um, the last set that we note with, depend on it, looks good, but just continues to goof off. Just one thing after another. He just has not put it together. I said it to Deb, who takes care of him. She loves him to death. I said, Deb, I'll make it as easy as I can. If I had a five-hour stable, i just turn him out. Turn him out for two months. But if we turn him out, it'll be on Ongate or, or something like that. Eventually, you guys know there's going to be three, four, five horses that just aren't going to make the cut. They're just not going to make the cut for the stable 2022. Um, and as they don't, they'll probably be moved on. Now, I haven't locked any in yet. Uh, but there's some horses that are on a, a short list. And depend on it is one of them. Uh, Twin Cedars All-Star was on that list, but looked good today. Both him and Dream of Credit looked good today. Very impressive, both of them. What a mission's a weird little horse. His gait is different than everybody else's. His temperament, he's just unique. I don't want to say anything negative because I, I don't want to be angry at him right now. He did make a break today, but he was touching himself. I didn't see any marks on him when he came in, but I could tell what he was doing. I can feel it. He was touching himself. So uh, he's a very unique horse. We're going to make a few little changes and work with him next week. I was happy with what I saw, but it's always weird. You know, we have all these trotters. A lot of them, they're by the same sires and they do the same thing. So what the hell? So we have three other ones. He doesn't act anything like them. It's, he's different, and it's weird to explain. He was okay today, but the standouts in that set were definitely Twin Cedars All-Star and Dream and a Credit. Both are vastly improved, and both look very good. Uh, depend on it. Just kept goofing off again today. Uh, what a mission rolled off, but I'd ask the blacksmith to make some changes. I think he'd be fine moving forward. Gandalf the Black made a break today. This horse is huge now. He's gotten very, very big now. Um, so, uh, again... He's a horse I'm going to need to see. You need to, He needs to do more. He just does. So I'll, I'll be completely upfront with everybody. I try to be all the time, and I say that, and I am again. I am tired. I'm going to go in this house right here. I'm going to eat two, maybe three pieces of pizza that I just ordered on the way home. And I am going to crash in that bed. And I'm going to slip the old do not disturb thing on the door. And if I don't happen to wake up in time to go drive, better be Sawyer. Good luck to you. And if I do, I'll be there. That's the deal. So, um, a long day already. It's only 2.30 2 in the afternoon, but it feels like it's about 9 o'clock at night. Uh, yesterday, obviously, not what I signed up for. But uh, that's racing. That's the way it is. I'm not going to complain about it. You know what? You know, JFK's food sucks, by the way. You know, I've been Detroit, great airport. Philadelphia, pretty good airport. They got that bar right outside of where the where all the screens are. Not a bad bar, pretty good food. The other restaurants is a you know the Philly cheese steak place. I know them all. Uh, cheeseburger, but they're all okay. Philly's okay. Detroit, very good. Charlotte, very good. Chicago's even decent. JFK is horrible. I literally asked three people what which restaurant's the best one because now I know I'm going to be there. Minimum six hours, maximum nine hours, which it turned out to be the maximum plus an hour. It was 10 hours in the airport. Um, what's the best restaurant? 
The uh, steak place is good. Japanese good. It sucks. Terrible food. Which I think that just ruined my day. That did it. Ruined my day. If JFK had to come with a decent steak or something, some kind of food that was good, I, I might, it might have been okay. There's nothing worse than, st you know, and, and you guys know, you know me by now. You know, I love, I love layovers. You know, Johnny Shu joked me yesterday, oh, I thought you liked layovers. Yeah, yeah funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't mind layovers because I know like a place like Detroit, there's a Longhorn Steak House in the airport. Charlotte, there's good food there. Even as I said, Philadelphia, I'm comfortable going to that restaurant. It's good food. JFK was horrible. I'll never fly into JFK again, ever. It'll never happen again, ever. So yesterday was a tough day, but um, as I said, that's racing. If that's the worst thing that happens to us, and so be it. I was lucky enough as I was literally taxiing out to take off from JFK last night. I get to watch no free lunch, put on probably the most dominant performance of his career. Wasn't the fastest, but 26 and three with the earplugs in and, uh, and did it right. Looked like a good horse and did it right. Uh, probably, you know, definitely the favorite in the final of, the, of that series now. And um, a bright future, bright future ahead. So we salvaged a, a week that started off crappy, but it ended up good. Kings County was awesome. Even the Michael horse deal was good. We're moving some horses over to Ohio now. Jason's on the cusp of transitioning there. He's over there today training horses. I'll get an update from him so I can I can um, give you guys your update um, for those horses. A lot going on right now buying, selling, staking. I got our staking bill the other day. I almost need to be resuscitated. Um, <laughs> but it looks like a great year ahead, right? Well, any any of the issues we've had this year, we can see them. We know what they are, right? We knew what happened Monday. I knew what happened Monday, so do you. Horses rolling over their heads, except for the one that made a break. That's racing. Eldis Patrick hit the gate, made a break. That's racing. Nothing you can do about that. But then you fast forward to Thursday. Kings County was, that's the opposite of what happened Monday. It was almost impossible for him to lose. You know, you guys saw my body language talking about, I'm looking at the program I'm like, all I have to do is stay in the seat and the horse should go to the winner's circle. Now there's no givens. There's no guarantees in horse racing, but that was as close as one as you're going to find. And hopefully they let him back in there again. Um, Captain Mike Dio was good and even Sonsu was all right. So we know we built the blueprint moving forward. Uh, we just have to follow it. Now, when it comes to the babies, very happy with them. I know you guys might have been surprised a few minutes ago to hear me say there's some horses that got to go. But, guys, we get 60, 61 babies. Of course there's going to be some horses that have to go. You know that. And you probably know who they are, same as I do. I'm keeping a close eye on, on, on a few of them. So, um, very happy with the rebound we've had. Uh, better be sorry. Looks like she's got a shot, even though she's up a class night. She's got a pretty good shot. And then my jazz tomorrow, pretty good shot. And then it's uh, back off to the races on Monday. We got White Tiger, uh, who's in tough. We know this though. There's, you know, um, this will be the last start at Mohawk for sure for my mini miracles. If they're not going to fill the numbers of three, she can go to London or Flamborough. Um, and then our boy Locatelli picked for second out of the nine hole. So great class for him too. Uh, very happy in that regard. Tuesday, we have one in Compass Rose, D.C. in Ohio. That could be our last start of our life. We'll see about that. Um, and then Wednesday, we have four horses in Wednesday. All four, I think, have pretty decent shots. Mama knows best. The new horse, Levator, is in to go. So is um, Jekyll and Hyde. And then first start of his sophomore career for Voyage of Ice and Fire. <laughs> He better race good. <laughs> um, you know, he's he still left a, a, a bitter taste in my mouth from last year. So his qualifier was good. Keep it going. So I'll talk to you all very, very soon. I hope you all had a great Saturday. It was a decent Saturday. Any any stand? Yeah, I'll give you your standouts today. Carter, Michael, Dio, Cutie, Cumber. Uh, we're both standouts. Set one. Uh, more than you know. And... Um, Victor Cruz, stand out in set two easily. Uh, Merchant Man and uh, Tailgate Buzz were standouts in the third. Honorable mention of Whispering Song, who fourth person said that she's an awesome filly. Watch out for her this summer. Anchors Up and Mo Power Baby were the stand standouts in the fifth set, fourth set, fifth set. Um, 
Spitfire Overseas, Una Madonna, Landing Pad, My 1%, Silent Assassin, and even Sipping on My Shine, the entire set was fantastic. Uh, next set, Enzo was very, very good. Coupe de Ville was very, very good. And GJ's ATM, very good also. Um, Cunning Connie and Magical Tom and Tactical Mounds looked very good in set seven. Set eight, um, Lost Spirit was a runaway winner. High Enterprise looked great, locked in. Oh my gosh, was good today too. Very happy with him. And then the last set, Twin Cedars All-Star and Dream and a Credit were standouts. Wow. Who would have thought that would have been said a month ago? Very happy with what I saw today. So take care. I'll talk to you soon. Got all your videos tomorrow. I'm not doing any more videos today. I'm going to have a sleep. Take care.